everyone, uh, K Kim here from the Traders Club, to tradersclub.com. Uh, thanks for tuning in for today's market commentary. I do want to start with the Dow Jones Industrial Average first, and then we'll look at S&P 500 and maybe few stocks that uh, you know uh, we are currently involved in. And so, looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we're actually looking at Diamond, not the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index itself. We're looking at Diamond. Just keep that in mind. We're looking at Diamond DIA. So. Uh, Looking at the uh, diamond here, first of all, this was important that you know that the uh, um, buyers, uh, you know, clear above this resistance level. Again, that was a level that's coinciding with this 171 and this this you know intermediate term downtrend resistance. This vicinity right here was very very important that buyers conquer that buyers stay above that level. That is the same level that was co you know coinciding with. Uh, you know, 200 SMA, 200 day moving average there. So this was an important level of a 171 ish level. Remember, we talked about on the SP 500 on, the, on my last video that what we talked about that 200 level on that spider was important. That's the same level as this 171 on the diamond, right? So again, we stayed above that level. That's a good sign. Something that we I've been talking about it is that watch that, you know, 65 minute chart. 50 EMA. I've been writing article, but I've been tweeting about it. Watch that, you know, rising 65 minutes are 50 EMA because that's going to be your guide. As long as we stay above that level, as long as that weekly fit or that 65 minute chart, you can look at it on your hourly also, uh, is rising. Market sentiment is bullish. What there's a reason why I say market sentiment is bullish. I don't say that because we're above 50 EMA. Mark my word that it's going to continue higher because it, it may not. But as long as we stay above it, the sentiment is bullish. You guys understand what I mean by sentiment, right? The attitude, the personality, the, the psychology of this market of traders, investors, their sentiment is, is bullish. There's a bullish sentiment in the market. So that's a kind of that's kind of what we've seen, you know, uh, last uh, you know, last this week and last week here, we did see a little bit of pullback right on that very, very prominent resistance here. We thought we did see a pullback, but we got back to the daily 10 MA, right? The weekly 50 or the 65 minute chart 50 MA is probably similar as on the daily chart that 10 MA, right? As you can see on this arrow there. So we, we came back down to that 10 MA, we found some support, and today we were we were able to gap above this prominent resistance, right? Again, that 10 MA was strong level because it has acted as a support in the past do you see this and sometimes you know what sooner or later this will break sooner or later that 10 EMA is going to break and then the bear is going to break below that level sooner or later that 65 minute chart 50 EMA we've been talking about this level here and here and here this will break but nobody knows when it's going to break so that's why there's a sentiment there's why there's a word that I use sentiment it's still bullish but unlike other indices though Dow Jones is the first Dow Jones industrial average is the first index to close or staying above this prominent resistance this resistance prominent also is preeminent because many times every time we hit this level this was an important level and the buyers tried hard break above this level last couple times last few occasions they tried it for a few months and was not able to do so we tanked miserably and then it, and then buyers came back tried it again right for how long from november all the way till end of december so for about two months or so we tried to break above that we were not able to break above that and we tanked right and then we threw that double bottom and there was a bullish divergence, which we talked about. We needed to see the 50 MA staying above it. We did that, and we got back up to this important resistance. We need to stay above this. And we did that. We got back up. And then we were met with this downtrend resistance once again on the Dow Jones. And you can see we pulled back. We got up. And currently, we're again, the market has been open about four hours and a half. We got about two hours, four, wait, nine, ten. Yeah, so four hours and a half. So we got about two hours and a half to go in the market. So I just want you guys to know that market is still open as I 
you know uh, make this video if you're watching this video when the market is closed you'll know how this how it has closed but i think if we can able to stay up because there could be a lot of shenanigans up here there could be a lot of uh, head fakes traps and and, and you know uh, shenanigans getting up because because we're slightly above it just getting slightly above it it's not it doesn't do a whole lot but as far as a minor to sentiment is concerned I think this is this was important level I think this is important level that a lot a lot of sellers are watching for the fact that this is level that last several times there are a lot of sellers showed up and brought this market down especially on the Dow Jones and for the fact that we are staying up currently and if we can have to stay up above this level rest of the week I think there's a good chance that Dow Jones will continue to grind higher, right? So this is important level that we need to watch. See if we can. I what I like to see though is that towards the end of the day, I like to see this gap staying open. I don't, you know, I mean, gap can still get filled, but you see this gap currently is still open. I like to see that gap. Uh, you know staying open towards the end of the day that way there's still more there's still kind of you know this this momentum this this just jump start that that that, that buyers can carry towards end of the week right so that's kind of what I'd like to see so I would, I would have to check it out see what happens towards the end of the day and there will be some people maybe thinking well okay isn't that exhaustion gap and there's a there's a good assessment um, I mean obviously we do have we did have a you know very very strong you know uh, what is this uh, breakaway gap? This was actually island reversal. What I mean by island reversal was we gapped down, we threw a high wave doji, and then and then we gapped up. That's a very strong uh, you know uh, sequence of island reversal. Gap down, doji, gap up. Also, you can call it a morning star island reversal candles, right, or patterns. And so we saw strong bottoming, and that was the vicinity of the double bottom there. And then we saw continuation gap right here. And then we saw another gap here was quickly filled though. And then we saw another gap here, and then we're seeing another gap. So we got gap, 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 gap. So then you're saying, well, well, that might be exhaustion gap. Well, we wouldn't know that because you could have called this was exhaustion gap, or that was exhaustion gap, or this was exhaustion gap. Only way we'll know that this is exhaustion gap is that when these things are coming down and fill this gap, then we could say, oh yeah, that was exhaustion gap. But let's say if this thing continues higher to the upside, maybe to 178, 180, 119, and this gap remains open, then we have to categorize that gap as continuation gap. What does that mean? The sentiment is still bullish. So watch your daily 10 EMA here and watch your 65 minute chart, 50 EMA there. As long as it's rising, as long as we staying above it, sentiment is bullish. Let me quickly look at S&P 500 here. Again, we're looking at spider. It's it, it, a little bit different on the spiders because again, remember Dow Jones staying above this, this prominent resistance, right? Well, spider is actually still not at that near that level yet. So that gives bears some edge there. That's what the probably bears are saying. Well, last several times, man, you guys were trying to get above this level, was not able to do so. So uh, you know what? You, you guys are still kind of, you know, vulnerable and I'm going to attack you attack you when you get up here so that's kind of what bears are saying in my you know it, it currently but right now I think we are seeing a little bit of you know a little bit of fade there because you know we, we with this resistance here about 207 level right this was a prior resistance so that's kind of what we're seeing there's a little bit of sellers at that vicinity also we've already seen this kind of move what since early February so it's been almost two months there so some people are taking profit and things after that gap up, but it looks like it's staying up well again what I like to see on the S&P 500 is what I like to see is I like to see the gap remaining open towards the end of the day I think if that could happen if we could see a bullish and if we can stay above that gap tomorrow, which is Thursday, then I think I think by Friday or maybe in early next week, there's a good chance that the market will continue to grind higher to the upside and hit that resistance. The biggest problem again is that when we get to this resistance, how is this market is gonna deal with that level, right? Again, go back to my video from last time, uh, how I talked about that this move might not be so, you know. Uh, you know, so solid for the fact that we've seen pretty much kind of a, you know, parabolic move. A lot of times these minor term, 
you know, lows and highs move. This is what I call like a, almost like a straight up move. We don't have, um, you know, uh, you know, well cultivated intermediate term higher lows. So it this move can be vulnerable. But some, I mean, I've seen where these moves just keep going higher, and then like, oh my God, there's resistance, and it it just act like it was never there and just blow right through it. I've seen that happen. Also, this is the reason why anything can happen in the market. But as far as the probability is concerned, I think you know this move you know meeting with this resistance i would say it's going to be very very interesting how we deal with that once we get to that level so we'll talk about it once we get to that vicinity but right now i think again market sentiment still bullish look at the 65 minute chart 50 ma still acting as support again something that i talked about in my last video is that don't be so obsessive with like pre precise level where oh my god we got below this 50 ma case so that means it's bearish Getting slightly below is not giving you a bearish sentiment. It's it's a reference point. It's the vicinity that is important. It's the it's the direction of that 50 MA. So the 50 MA is rising on this 65 minute chart. So even though we get slightly below it, the the sentiment, right? The psychology, the attitude, the personality of this move, it's still bullish. And I think that's kind of why we saw this move there last few days. Uh, I do want to quickly uh, go through some of these, uh, you know, some of the stuff that I'm, we're watching here at the Traders Club. This is a U.S. real estate ETF. This is a this is a stock that we're watching here. Obviously, you know, this is important level. Obviously, you know, this is a th something that I talked about in my last video. Is that that's kind of what market loves to do, right? Everybody's watching because everybody's, you know, everybody's watching these resistance support levels, right? And then we get slightly above it. People are, all, you know, people are all think that oh my god, it's going to continue higher, and then they're buying, and then they get trapped there. It was like and then we get slightly below the support oh my god this thing is going to just tank and then people start short selling or get stopped out or buying puts and then it just completely reverses on you so right now what i like to see uh you know before going long i like to see this thing really just getting above this level and staying above it i think if you can do that uh there's a good chance that this thing could continue to maybe 80 to 60 or 84 83 90 so there's a good cultivation there what i also like is a long-term trend development of uh nope that's not did i did a log uh probably not i guess it doesn't hit it uh but i think what i was looking at is more of this kind of a primary term higher lows and higher highs right so we got this uh primary term uptrend going on there it, it again it's, it's one of those things where um it looked like right there right it looked like right there it looked like right there it looked like right there you see how, how you see you gotta love this market so a lot of times this market just give you this give you that give you this and then that's the point where it completely reverses on you right you know what i really like to see just looking at a big picture man if i could see more of like an intermediate term higher low and then get up that might be a little bit more solid so uh but yeah i i'm not sure if that's what's going to happen or if it's just going to keep going higher but i definitely keep an eye on this because it looks like uh it looks like uh you know as far as if the market can reverse or going back you know presume or resume back up this a prime time option dover market i think us real estate etf i i y r will do very very good there i'll look at apple here real quick apple also uh you know the, the really something that i was i've been watching on apple is the monthly chart right the monthly chart if we look at a monthly chart here look at this uh this is a very, very prominent level. Why? Because this was prior resistance on this monthly chart and now it's becoming a support. Not only that, on this monthly chart, look at that 50 EMA on the monthly chart. Oh, if you're a weekly, which I've been talking about, it's a 200 SMA that has been acting as support. It acted as support here and here, and that was important level there, and it was important level there, and obviously, indeed, this is important level now. But also, look at the candles. Candles, what do they say? This is what we call evening star reversal. We got a bullish candle, we got a uh, gravestone doji, and then with a bearish candle, boom, right? That's what we call evening star reversal. One, two, three, four, five, about six months decline afterwards, right? And right in that vicinity of pivot, right? on the old resistance level what do we have bearish candle and we got a doji and we got a bullish candle what do we have we have morning star reversal complete opposite from what we've seen in september of 2012 and just right on that pivot right so 
that gives you that sentiment of bullishness. However, we still have this downtrend resistance that it needs to conquer. It needs to get above. Looking at this monthly chart here, maybe something like that. I'm not sure yet. But so far, there has been some bullish sentiment there. And on my last week, we talked about you know um, this level here. This is important level of resistance. Again, that level of 108 and that that falling resistance level. This is what I called demon for buyers, right? Because the last several last last time last few times was not able to get above that level this thing tanked and it tanked hard so there is going to be a lot of resist there's going to be a lot of resistance there's a lot of sellers in that vicinity um, it's also level coinciding with that daily 200 daily 200 day moving average there that pink line coming down we are staying above all other moving averages uh but uh you know, we're just right. This is a vicinity 111, 108 on Apple is where 200 SMA is hanging around there. So I think if we can able to get above 111.34 and stay above it, right? I think there's a good chance this thing is going to 121.25. And we'll pull back. If you're going to have to do this right there, you want to start your new position on Apple. You want to possibly, um, you know, ride this thing for the next six months or a couple of years. You, I would, I would definitely wait until it, at least it gets up above 125-ish level. You know what I mean? Not to be hasty right now and trying to call it this is a bottom yet because we're still in this kind of a lower, low, lower high thing going on there, which means we're still kind of in a, we're not kind of, we're still in this intermediate term downtrend, intermediate to possibly primary term downtrend, but obviously major primary term, we're still in an uptrend. So my vocabulary, you got to understand when I say major primary things like, well, okay, this is not, we're not in that. We're not in uptrend. Well, looking at this big picture, we are, we are in an uptrend. At least we're still in a vicinity of an uptrend, but looking at more of a, this price action, we're in downtrend. You see, that's what a lot of people that misunderstand what I'm trying to say here. We, you must understand all time frame. Minor term, intermediate term, primary term, and major primary term. Whenever time I say major primary term, it means the whole thing, the whole history, right? But anyway, so uh, that's where we're at with Apple. Quickly, uh, some of the ones that you know we've been involved in. Apple, we're also involved in there, but we're still holding. We're losing money on Apple actually right now, but hoping to uh, recover. Uh, Costco has been, you know, we've been we've been uh, involved in this. I think late last year here. And what's going on right now is this is a level that uh, we formed this inverted head and shoulder. Today we are confirming that inverted head and shoulder. We also, um, you know, breaking above. We have broken above this downtrend resistance. But the, again, the good thing about Costco is that looking at a big picture, we are still cultivating primary term higher lows and higher highs. And what does that mean? It means a primary term trend is up with the minor to intermediate term bottoming signal is at hand and we have an initial confirmation of the inverted head and shoulder in that process we have cultivated and solidified that you know minor to intermediate uptrend there another one is the boston scientific we've been really milking this thing since uh, since right here, uh, 2014, actually late 2014, we've been writing it. We started covering some there or closing it out some there and we added some more and then we held through, came down, but we held through that for the knowing that, hey, we have these support levels in this vicinity. And then we threw this inverted head and shoulder. This is the you know neckline there. We stayed above it. Today, we're holding up well. Also, we've been cultivating higher lows in the primary term. What does that mean? We're still in this vicinity of primary term uptrend. So looking at a big picture, trend is what? Trend is up. So I think if we can able to clear above some of this level here, I mean, my target on this is 22, even 24. Looking at your monthly chart on Boston Scientific, it's looking great. So you see this, um, this you see this, uh, this is it is it green to you guys or is it blue like light blue that, that's a monthly 20 SM with the histogram there so as long as we stay above that level it is considered bullish in the primary term you see how as long as it stayed below it, it it's bearish you see how mass and side has been this bearish for quite some time and then once we got above that right there right 
We are staying up. And every time we get to the level, what does it do? We're surfing. We're staying above it. We're not immersing. We're not, you know, we're not staying below it. We're staying above it. So, you know, again, it's not enough to just look at daily charts. It's not enough to just look at, you know, uh, your, you know, intraday chart or weekly. You gotta understand the big picture so you understand the whole picture where it's headed. So I think Boston Scientific, I mean, as long as the market is healthy, Boston Scientific is a great future. Looking at technical perspective, I mean, I, I even think that this thing could get up here in 44, 40, 36, 32, 28, 24. Again, it's gonna have its ups and downs. And again, as long as the market is in, in you know, market's overall sentiment is bullish, Boston Scientific is gonna do well. And I think we're gonna continue to milk that. Uh, Google, uh, we're not in Google. We've, uh, we, you know, we were involved here back in, you know, 2015 May. We closed all of our positions up here, and then. Uh, you know, we haven't got back in there, but you know, I think good thing about Google is though, uh, we are cultivating minor term uptrend right there, right? Higher lows and higher highs. Obviously intermediate term, primary term, uh, trend is up, right? So we're still in an uptrend. All these moving averages are rising. So trend is up. So I think, you know, this next level of resistance or next level of target probably is 800 level. We have a good cultivation there. I think as long as we, can't able to stay above this support. We may even call come back down and fall back. But if we can have to call today another higher low, then there's a good chance I think we'll get to about 800 level there. But I think one thing about Google, what I've learned is that once they starts kind of a see a lot of volatility like we've seen here, it, it, there's a good chance that it, this could kind of stay on the sideways move that's kind of how google likes to move it does that like we'll have the sideways move for a while and then we move up and then we have the sideways move and then we move up and then we have the sideways move and then we move up that's kind of how google likes to do things as, as far as it's, it's it's stocks movement right so we'll see how that plays out there looking good though uh, in a minor term tesla on my last video i talked a lot about this downtrend resistance we cleared that good sign one thing we need to see is equal highs we did that we're pulling back uh the, i think that at this point are we able to get up and for the first time create that higher high there so that's kind of what we're looking at i'm still watching tesla we're not involved in it yet but you know what's interesting on tesla is if we look at a monthly chart if we go to a monthly chart here let me just go like this uh Look at this, we have this massive double top and this long lower wick. Do you see that? This is how this market traps everybody. But keep in mind, this is a very, very important pivot. What I mean by pivot, it's old resistance becoming new support or support here and here and here. Also, do you see these candles? We just talked about this candle on Apple bearish candle, hammer candle, and bullish candle. What is that? It's morning star reversal. What does that look a lot like? This is it's this right here. This is an evening star. Bullish candle, bearish doji, or spinning top, and then bearish candle, and we got one, two, and then three, four, five months of bullish bearish run with that evening star reversal right on the resistance. Location, 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 right? So this was a resistance level. We threw an evening star reversal, came down. This is important support. We're throwing morning star reversal with the huge trap that happened right here. Again, this is a monthly chart, right? So I wanna watch Tesla. Uh, we're not involved in it, but I, I, I possibly thinking going long you know, some in this vicinity there and see how it plays out. Um, another one is JNG, we're watching it. We're not, you know, we're not involved in it, but uh, this is the level that I'm watching it. And you know what, for me though, I don't wanna go long right now after this kind of move. What I wanna see, cause this is important level of pivot, right? So we're, we're kind of hitting this resistance. What I'd like to see a pullback. And then I wanna see certain cultivation of this uptrend, right? We got this, this, and that. And then if we get up, there's a strategy where you can go long here. And there's a strategy where you can go long here. Again, you have to watch the traps and fakes and all that kinds of stuff. But that's kind of what I like to see. I'm looking for a pullback before going long on Jay Johnson and Johnson. I like Johnson long time, long term. I like I like what we've seen. The you know I like the. Uh, the pullback we've seen, the correction. I like the call to. I like the you know it's, it re stabilized itself with this inverted head and shoulders. So I, I and I think that it's Johnson Johnson's ready to uh, possibly 
get back up this its primary time uptrend. And Johnson and Johnson kind of, you know, get into this volatility, and then it gets kind of a smooth bullish move. That's kind of what it does. You see how it's like we get this volatility, and then you get a smooth move, and then you get a little bit of volatility, and we got a little bit of smooth move. We got a volatility. We fell back. We go up, and then some volatility there, possibly smooth move before another volatility. Right. That's kind of how. That's why again, it is imperative that you understand each stock's personality. See how it trades. Right. McDonald's. I'll end with this. Uh, McDonald's. We've uh, we've been actually long uh, on McDonald's since the uh, of, of uh, the ER day there. And again, it's the same concept. That's what McDonald's like to do. That the reason we went long right there is because well, we get we get this volatility and then we get the move. We get this volatility and then we get that move. Right? Again, I mean, I'm making it like oh, that's so simple. Again, we're looking at the big picture. If you are not looking at this every single day, every single second, it can be that simple. Right? Sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes it works out. Some trades don't work out. Some trades works out. But when it does work out, it seems like oh my god, that's so simple. When it doesn't work out, why didn't it work out? And you just pull your hair out, right? It's just it's just part of the game. Some stocks don't work out. Some stocks don't. You, there is no like an absolute hundred percent guaranteed trader. Nobody truly knows where it's gonna go. But we have the probability. So if you understand how McDonald works, and if you just kind of study his charts. You know, looking the big picture there, that's kind of how it likes to move. So, you know, obviously you got these sideways move there, got these sideways there. So I thought, hey, you know what? Once that we have a good earnings, we have a good positive review or you know reaction rather from the traders and investors right here. We got long there, and then you can see it's just continuing higher there. So um, we actually closed some of our positions up here, and then just holding the remaining. Uh, I think uh, it looks like uh, you know, I, you know, if I put a little bit of Fibonacci for next target. Right there. I mean, it looks like you know, could be 137. It could be a next target, but I think even 130, that round number in the middle of it is probably could act as resistance. Kind of people, you know, uh, taking some uh, profits there in that vicinity before going to maybe 140-ish level. McDonald looking great again. I have to say this: as long as the market continues to uh, illuminate, okay, over a market, illuminate bullish environment, a lot of these stocks that I just talked about, they'll do well. But again, if the market start crashing, everything is going to go with it. This is the reason why we uh, look at the market sentiment, the overall sentiment, and then we try to ascertain individual stocks movement based upon where the market is going. So um, yeah, so I just uh, looked at Dow Jones and S&P 500 and some of the stocks that we're watching, some of the stocks we're involved in, and uh, some of the stocks that uh, could be a, a good uh, candidate to possibly uh, go even more long term here if if the you know if the you know if, if the indices are able to get above some of the important levels uh, of this it's you know this prominent resistance there if we can stay above that and then if we can able to um, you know resume back up this primary term uptrend. And I always have to say the resume back up because people don't understand that language. What do you mean by resume back up? We're in a downtrend. Okay, no, we're not in a downtrend. I mean, how many times do I have to tell you? We're still in this major primary term uptrend. So benefit of the doubt, looking at the major primary term. Look at my language, please. Major primary term is concerned. The benefit of the doubt goes to the buyers in the major primary term. Did I say that we're going to get up and we're going to 240 on Spider? No. I'm saying benefit of the doubt goes to buyers in the major primary term because we're still in the vicinity of primary term high or low. But looking at more of an intermediate term side, intermediate to primary term side, we are in this kind of a downtrend ish. We're not like truly downtrend because, I mean, truly downtrend will be like this. That's a truly downtrend. We're kind of in this like channel like type of action. What does that mean? Well, the sentiment is 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 we're we're slightly like you know we we have this kind of a sentiment of falling channel type of action going on. If that's what's going to happen, then we could expect something like this. But we get above this level, and we see something like this happening, and we stay above this, then it could. Then I say that we could resume back up this major primary term uptrend, and then we could reverse out of this possible, you know, this, you know, minor intermediate to primary intermediate term 
a bearish channel sentiment. We could come out of this kind of a bearish chain, falling bearish channel sentiment. Is it is it a lot to take? Is it a lot to understand? So yeah, there's a lot to think about in, in the market. There's a lot to think about when you're trading with technical analysis. Because you know, one thing that I've, I've I see is that people are only looking at one side, one side of the coin, and they always argue. Especially you know, if you want to start trading, people always you know share these charts, and they always argue with the one side. Well, there's a bearish. Uh, connotation and so I'm gonna so market is bearish. Well, there's a bullish connotation. So market is bullish. No, the both is kind of right. There's a bearish sentiment or bearish connotation or bearish ideas, and then there's a bullish ideas. You gotta put them together, and then you have to assess the situation. And that's real technical analysts who can, that that's why we analyze things. We analyze things because we're bringing both together. If anybody can come up with and say, well, it's a bearish because, well, you know, we are below this resistance. Well, because there's a bearish divergence. Anybody can point things out. The true technical analysts, the seasoned and well-trained technical analysts, it's bring both I or both information together right we got bearish uh, article or bearish information and bullish information and then you say hey which one it has a weightier matter which one has a weightier matter right right there so this is bullish idea that's a bearish idea and which one has weightier matter and then you lean towards to the weightier matter and sometimes it's gonna be like 50 50. i think the market right now we're like slightly bullish, in my opinion. When I look at all the data there is, there is not a one data that I miss. Like, you know how people always wanna like, you know, uh, people always want to argue with all this, oh, what about this, what about that? It's not that like I missed it. I just, you know, it's not that I missed it and I'm just, you know, I'm just, oh, I forgot about the data or I forgot them. It's not, I saw it, I see it there. I just think that it's not weighty enough for me to put a lot of weight on it right now. So what I, when I deal with it, like articles or tweets and videos, I deal with things that are more relevant, it's weightier. You know what I'm saying? Because it's gonna take, like, if I go through every single data there, it's gonna take hours just to look at S&P 500. Like it will take like one whole hour. If we just look at S&P 500, look at every single data is there, and just explain it to you guys, it's gonna take a whole hour, just on one index, maybe two hours. So that's the reason why. Um, so if you ask me, well, what do you think as far as, a, well, when I look at a big picture, major, major primary term pictures, and go back to my blog and look at an article that I wrote, Bulls One Last Fight in-depth technical analysis. I wrote this a few months ago when the market was down here, when this thing came down, right? I wrote a bullish article up here. Um, and I did write a bullish article down here. Anyway, so, because uh, I was looking at big picture and I, I, I saw that there's likely another bullish move, bulls one last fight. What I was saying that is that there bulls after this prolonged uptrend, buyers are not going to just roll red carpet and welcome bears. They are going to fight. Again, nobody knows for sure if that's what's going to happen, but probability-wise, it has happened before in the past, you know, uh, historically speaking. So I thought, hey, there we're going to see that. And I think that's what we're seeing here. But also in occasions, in, in there are times where that one last fight became a reversal and then market re, re, resumed, continue higher to the upside. But I'm not calling that yet. I will call that once we start to stay up here. I start to see this thing staying above 207, 211. I'll write an article that buyers are ready to take it back up to maybe 220 or even higher but not right now, but I'm slightly looking at a big picture, I'm slightly bullish. Big picture, okay? Major primary, and please understand my vocabulary, please understand my language here. Looking at a major primary term, I'm bullish. Looking at intermediate to primary term, they, we're like kind of, we could getting into this falling channel type, there's a chance that we, we're gonna get into this falling type of channel action. We could, I'm not saying it's going to, it, we could. That's why it's very, very important how we deal with this. You see, 
Isn't that beautiful that as a technical analyst, you don't have to call things. You don't have to say, well, I know for sure, man, it's going up. And you just, you're fixed in that. We technical analysts, we are flexible. Not like changing our, you know, directions every single day. Oh my God, I'm, it's, when it's bullish, it's bullish. When it's down, it's bearish. Like, you know, there are people out there like, oh my God, it's bullish because market is up. Oh my God, it's bearish because market is down. No, if you've been following me the last several months, my major primary term view has not changed. I'm still bullish in a major primary term. Again, major, major, the big picture. But I've changed my views on the intermediate term based upon its market's action. And there's a luxury in that as a technical traders, we, we are flexible and we're not just gonna be fixated on one direction. You, you see what I'm saying? And we look at all the data and I think there's, it's, it's you need more sophistication to do that more leniency and not such a you know hard-headed in your you know what i'm saying <laughs> anyway um there's a little rent there last five minutes but yeah major primary term i'm bullish you know leaning towards bullishness uh intermediate term to primary term leaning towards possibly this kind of a channel type of action which could happen i'm not sure yet i want to see how he deals with that obviously minor term to intermediate term, we're in this bullish sentiment because we remember I told you about that. We're at, you know, 65 minute chart of uh, the 50 MA. As long as we stay above it, sentiment is bullish. And I talked about that. So that's that. So that's my take on the market. And uh, I'll follow with you guys maybe next week and see how we deal with it. Um, if we get up here by the end of the week, maybe I'll do another video on the weekend or something like that. But I want to see how, I mean, just getting up there, you know, it's not important. I want to see how he deals with this vicinity. If we even get higher above this level there, just expect there's going to be a lot of volatility here. There will be a lot of um, pet fakes. There will be a lot of uh, shenanigans happening, traps and things. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll have to see how it deals once we get there. And uh, I'll follow with you guys once uh, once that happens. Have a have a great uh, have a great night. I'll talk to you guys next time. If you like the video, please uh, subscribe.